Hello class and welcome to this NES Baseball Guide right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and we are celebrating the start of the baseball season by playing the original NES baseball title, the first one to ever be released for the Famicom, the NES. Fluff is actually going to talk a bit about that a little bit later, but uh, yeah, we have a number of tips which will help you through this. Actually, it's kind of a deceptively difficult sports game. In terms of difficulty, I'm going to give NES Baseball a 5 out of 10. On the frustration scale, this equates to throwing your controller across the room, probably when you threw the ball to the wrong base, but fear not, Blaze has a number of tips, actually. He's traded out his items guide for Baseball Clinic, so a number of tips which will help you put up some runs, stop some runs on the other side of the ball, of course. So let's run the intro into this baseball guide right here on Video Games 101. As we start a new game here, select one player. You can play against a friend, of course. Good way to ruin a friendship. Uh, but, oh, Fluff, by the way, do these letters denote anything in particular? Yes, the A is for your Oakland Athletics, the C, the St. Louis Cardinals, D, the Los Angeles Dodgers, P is, of course, the Philadelphia Phillies, R are the Kansas City Royals, and finally, Y, of course, is the New York Yankees. All right, good call, Fluff. Let's take a look now at the controls for NES Baseball. Pretty straightforward, as you can see right here. We can advance the runner, throw to base with B, depending on what side of the ball you're on, obviously. Swing when you're at bat, tap it to bunt with A. Return the runner, and when you're pitching, with A, and you can see the directions for the different types of pitches, but pretty straightforward. As we take a look now at the Briggs notes, the keys to winning in this very tricky baseball game for the NES. Basically just attend Blaze's baseball clinic. So without further ado, let's bring in Blaze to give us some hot tips on how to win at NES baseball. All right, welcome to my baseball clinic. These tips will help you earn more runs and prevent runs in NES baseball. First, the bluff home steal second technique. Now, like most baseball games, when you have runners on first and third, you can generally always advance the first base runner to second by bluffing like you're going to steal home with that third base runner. They'll be forced to throw the ball home, at which point you should return your man to third base while stealing second with your first base runner. And because we all know that thrown baseballs travel far slower than humans can move, you'll always be able to safely reach second before that throw can get there. Secondly, with that in mind, try to swing early or late on pitches so that you can hug the foul line to the left or right with your hits. That makes the CPU fielders take an embarrassing amount of time to get to the ball, at which point you can easily get a double, if not a triple. When fielding, CPU players always throw to the base where you have a runner closest to home. So take advantage of this, know that you can always get that maybe first to second base runner there safely when you have someone closer to home because that's what they want to protect is that run. So take advantage of that. Also, slow pitches are less likely to leave the park, so these make for an easy flyout or ground hit, which you can easily field and get the out with. Not a sure thing. Don't be surprised if they get one or two big knocks off of slow pitches, but on balance, slower pitches, much safer to throw in NES baseball. And lastly, bunts can work well. You want to get that sweet spot between tapping it to where the catcher will run up on it and going a few feet away from the catcher so that the pitcher assumes the responsibility. <laughs> Ridiculous as that is. I don't know if it's like a major league, the movie situation where Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn slept with the catcher's wife unwittingly and that's just the catcher's way of paying him back by leaving him out to dry or what. But it's very effective bunting when you hit it in that sweet spot here in NES Baseball. Good luck. Love a Major League reference. Thank you very much, Blaze. Yes, if you watched our intro, you'll see that uh, we made reference to 
the uh, the bluff home steel second technique, the first and third, as I I like to call it personally. Man, <laughs> you have to uh, appreciate. We're off to a good start here in the bottom of the, uh, the the first right here, getting some insurance runs because the the other team can turn it on just uh, on demand. Let's. All right, we're not gonna have to test it right here. Just moving our players right here. Are we gonna squeeze in? Wow, that was a gimme. Ty goes with the runner, as they say. Certainly holds true here in NES Baseball. Let's see if we can get some more insurance runs just to give ourselves a nice little padding. I have to say, um, uh, I know everyone had their personal favorite. Yeah, he's gonna come up with that. All right, first out, but not before we score seven runs. I wasn't kidding when I said in the opening, this is uh, probably a six out of 10, five or six out of 10. It's not an easy baseball game. Uh, it's certainly geared more toward the CPU team. Um, there's that short little sort of bunt. Ty didn't go to the runner there, though. I don't know. I, I feel like the, uh, the when I was trying to get home, that guy was a lot closer to being out than that guy right there. But what are you going to do? All right, we have a chance to... Nope. <laughs> I keep underestimating how badly the fielders are in this game. But uh, let's see if we can... Maybe squeeze one more run out of this here, if possible. As I was about to say, though, everyone has their personal favorite baseball game, I think, when it comes to the NES. There were a lot of great titles. There was really a glut of baseball-themed NES games, way more than there needed to be, actually. You had the RBI series. I mean, that was multiple games there. There was multiple games in the Bases Loaded series. Now... A lot of people swear by that series. I can never get behind the fact that they changed the orientation of the field, the perspective, I suppose. It was more of a right to left and left to right rather than we're at the bottom of the screen when we're at bat. It's just, they made a choice. You know, they, they tried to reinvent the wheel. A lot of people really liked it. That's fine. You had baseball stars, baseball star, you get it? The baseball stars game. You have this, obviously. Uh, Legends of the Diamond sounds like something. <laughs> Maybe I just invented a title. I don't know. That sounds familiar. My personal favorite, though, to finally get around to saying it, was Baseball Simulator 1000 from Culture Brain. Uh, the game with, you know, if you were going to make a great baseball game for the NES, it had to have a twist. And in that game, not only did it have great gameplay as far as I was concerned, but uh, can we keep this going here? There we go. Just put it in play. All right, we were, uh, they're going for, all right, bit of a, a change there. Can we advance our, there we go. <laughs> As Blaze said, just like real life, when they, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the baseball travels much slower than humans can actually run, apparently, or at least they throw it slower than humans are capable of moving. Plenty of insurance runs here. We just keep bringing them in. This is quite genuinely, not to discount the the handicap which I gave this game at the top, but this is the best inning I've ever had in NES baseball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is not the norm, I have to say, but if I could stop being distracted by this amazing inning that we're experiencing right now together, class. Baseball Simulator 1000. Uh, the uh, the novelty was that um, we should definitely make that. All right, it's close. Getting the first is always the hardest. That there were super hits and pitches, crazy things which uh, threw a monkey wrench into everything. And uh, there we go. Yeah, you had like fireball pitches which broke the bat when you threw them. You had uh, just all kinds of crazy at bats, tremor hits. You would. Whenever you would hit a ground ball, there we go, that's the end. <laughs> we'll have to settle for our 12 runs. There you go. But uh, yeah, Tremor hit where you would hit in Baseball Simulator 1000 into the ground and it would just freeze all of the fielders. <laughs> but uh, using Blaze's technique right here, just taking a lot off of the pitch, just going slow here. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. They must have uh, attended Blaze's baseball clinic as well there. <laughs> Making the most of that 
Late little tap right there. Not so much a bunt, but just a weak little hit off of a slow pitch to begin with. And it just, you know, for whatever reason, the, uh, the catcher feels like he can't move in that situation. They're definitely going to get something out of that. It, it's offensive how inept your team becomes while on defense. <laughs> Note that for those of you unfamiliar with the rules of baseball, these are the same players out in the outfield, which were just up at bat on our team and sprinting all around the bases when we were on offense. So apparently they just, I they had like a huge spaghetti meal before they headed out to take their defensive positions on the field between every inning. Does this guy think he's Casey Jones or something? What is he doing? Letting those first two pitches go by, but, but yeah, high calorie, just pasta meals, but yes, it's infuriating, but it goes both ways. So I suppose we, uh, we should just uh, appreciate the benefits which we earn from the uh, from that. So that shouldn't leave the park. There we go. All right, that was close. Managed the damage there. I like they can't fit a 12 on the scoreboard for that first inning. So we're trying to pad our lead a little bit here in the bottom of the second. Let's bring in Fluff for a fluff fact about NES baseball. Fluff, what do you got for us? Baseball was one of 17 games which were released day one with the launch with the NES on October 18th, 1985. These earlier Nintendo-made NES titles are referred to as black box titles because Nintendo quite literally shipped them in minimalistic black boxes with the same font and similar artwork. Many of these games were released so early in the NES's life cycle that they were actually made without NES ROM chips. Instead, they were shipped with adapters to convert the game from Japanese Famicom console format to be NES compatible. These games were subsequently manufactured with NES ROM chips on later shipments, so if you got one of the original shipped copies of one of these launch games, take it as a point of pride, albeit a small one. Good call, Fluff. Thank you very much. Yeah, those minimalistic, uh... <laughs> If I were the manager of that team, I would just be livid right there where they're just kind of rolling around the ball. There was a special hit in Baseball Sim, just to reference that game one last time. Is that going to... There we go. <laughs> Looked like he had it, but not so much. Yeah, there was a special... Yeah, I keep forgetting there. They generally go for that farther. Obviously, they want to get the out, protect the, uh, the run right there as so they were throwing it home, but that's all right. Let's see what we can do with this. Little bouncer, there we go. Split the defenders, and this should allow us to do Blaze's trick right here. It's just doing the mental gymnastics, basically, and I think we got it, there we go. It requires, yeah, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of untangling of your brain to make sure that you're both advancing and retreating to the right bases at the right times and everything. We should be able to do it again here. Actually, it doesn't even matter since they can't seem to just pick up a uh, simple baseball there. Who are we playing against? We're playing against Detroit, I suppose. Wasn't even paying attention as to uh, who we picked there at the start. Again, they're all the same, but... Yeah, there was... It was called it the Bobble Ball. We have playthroughs of Baseball Sim 1000 on as we try to do the trick again. Every time, it never fails. You could apply the same trick to virtually every baseball game on the NES because the speeds were such that, yeah, on every single game, the runners were always so much faster. That was a good hit. That's where you got to do it. Like Blaze mentioned, just kind of toe that line. I'm not sure why he's not trying to get over, but easily get a double, if not a triple out of that. I probably could have run on that knowing they were going to throw to home there, but... We'll take it. We'll we'll be up 19 runs. Ser this is literally the best round I think I've ever. Why wouldn't the pitcher just pick that up? <laughs> so many questions I have for any space. It's a fun baseball game, I have to say. I'm not faulting it, but all right, that's definitely out. Bring everybody back for that. Yeah, we have uh, the baseball sim 1,000 playthroughs at. Let's play with the Brigands, our sister or maybe parent channel, if you will. 
Bases loaded right here. And uh, this guy up to bat, not sure who this is. I think I read that the second, third, and fourth, something like that, the early guys in your lineup are sort of the power hitters, which you would expect if you generally, when they're putting together lineups for baseball games, real baseball games, you want to put your, your leadoff guy at first. He just tries to get on base, basically, so that your next guy can bat clean up, get a big knock. How is that safe, by the way? Oh, see, look at that. See, they have it in them. They have the jets when they want to. Maybe there's some sort of topical PED on the ball itself or something, and without it, they're a pack of lumbering, uncoordinated buffoons, but once they have it, they're Usain Bolt. Sorry, that's the most recent reference I can come up with, class. Apologies, but... Let's uh, try to protect this 22-run lead. Pitcher's best friend, I feel like. Having a 22-run cushion to work with. 44 miles an hour. See? I mean, there's something to be said about these ridiculously slow pitches. They make contact. It's not hard to make contact, but that is a fast 1-2-3. You know? 3 up, 3 down. You live and die by those slow pitches, but in my experience, as Blaze mentioned, more often than not, then, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna get you where you need to be. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can add anything to this lead here. I think at this point when we have a 22-run cushion, um, I'm not gonna so much try to swing late or early, just kind of put it in play and hopefully we can get some outs and <laughs> end this game a little sooner. I didn't mean to keep referencing baseball sim. Again, it's my favorite baseball game, but uh, it there's a mercy rule in play with baseball simulator where if you're up by at least 10 runs at the end of, uh, at the bottom of the inning. I think it's an automatic game over, essentially. So, uh, that's probably how they should do it, but... Jeez, you know how embarrassing it is to try to get that check out as the pitcher when you're down 22 to nothing? Just <laughs> the ticky-tack. Well, it never worked before, but maybe this time. Gotta hand it to him. There you go, that's what you get, nerd. <laughs> homered on you after that. It's the baseball god saying, just play it out, man. Like we keep the camera on that shot to watch the guy advance right there. There you go. All right. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll just try to put it in play at this point. <laughs> we might speed this up in a minute unless this gets more interesting. In the interest of making this more interesting, actually, let's bring in Fluff. There we go. For another Fluff fact about NES Baseball. Fluff? In the Famicom version of the game, a true Famicom version, by the way, not the one with the adapter for the NES, which I talked about earlier, the speeds of the pitches are shown in kilometers per hour before they were changed to miles per hour for the North American and European versions. The team names were also obviously changed, or better said, the letters representing the team names were changed from major league teams, which I talked about earlier, to Nippon Professional Baseball Teams, the highest level of professional baseball in Japan. Specifically, the teams were, for C, the Hiroshima Toyo Carp, D, the Chinichi Dragons, G, the Yimiori Giants, so I'm butchering these, S, the Occult Swallows, T, the Hanshin Tigers, and W, the Yokohama Taiyo Whales. The Yumiura Giants, in particular, are the winningest team in Japanese baseball history with 22 championships combined. In fact, if you add up all the championships of every other Japanese team featured in this game, their combined championships still wouldn't equal the Giants, with a combined 15 for the rest of the league, to the 22 to the Giants, at least at the time of this class. Talk about a dynasty. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I was actually curious, I, uh, just if the, the Yankees and the Giants, the Japanese Giants, aligned with uh, their positions in the team selection, but they do not. I thought maybe that would be a nod. But uh, not the case right there, but that's fine. The runs are slowing down. That's somewhat by design. As I said, we're not really trying to toe the lines anymore at this point. Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. 
You're a professional NES baseball player, and you're out there bucknering it. <laughs> right through the legs. Arguably my favorite episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, by the way. But, uh, but yeah, just come on. It's like, it doesn't even, even when it doesn't go through their legs, it can be like a foot away and they just flat out, it's offensive how they'll just flat out refuse to feel the ball when it's just out of their grasp, you know? <laughs> gotta get to my base. No runners on base. Still gotta get to my base. Whatever. NES baseball player logic, I suppose. Big knock right there to put us up 27 nil. All right, finally. They're speeding this thing up right here. As we go to the top of the fifth, my uh, my tolerance for the lack of drama right here, it's uh, it's it's at its its max right here. So let's. This is my way of saying we're gonna bring in fluff for one final fluff fact about NES baseball. And while he's delivering said fact, we're gonna speed this up a little bit to. Try to get us to the end of this game. We'll see if we can keep our shutout intact in the meantime, but Fluff, take us home. Largely considered to be the father of Nintendo, not to mention the creator of classic characters like Super Mario and Link, Shigeru Miyamoto was the chief designer on NES Baseball, a role he took on because he was a big baseball fan himself and personally wanted a baseball title for the NES. NES Baseball was not only important to Miyamoto, but it played a hugely instrumental role in helping to promote the NES when it was initially launched in Manhattan in 1985. Keeping in mind that the video game crash of 1983 was still fresh in people's minds, particularly in America, a game which accurately and effectively simulated America's favorite pastime in NES baseball helped to legitimize the system, and as such, much of the promotion for the system featured the game. The game was very successful, becoming roughly the 14th best-selling title for the NES overall, and it was even ported to the popular two-player arcade Versus system as Versus Baseball in 1984. Good call. Thank you very much, Fluff. Yes, we're quadruple speeding this at this point. Still uh, defending our shutout right here. Our nameless pitcher. Can't expect that level of detail. Sorry if the audio is a little out of sync at this point. <laughs> when we've got the, the quad speed going here. If you'd like to see the entire playthrough of our game of NES Baseball here, we will be uploading that in the future without the commentary, without the TAs, as we normally do. Lucky seventh inning. Baseball sim. Just keep going back to it at this point. I'm not even even going to apologize for it anymore. At Baseball Sim, kind of everybody was juiced up in the seventh inning. All the stats were kind of boosted, so uh, hits were easier to come by. And uh, they finally got one in, didn't they? Finally drove it. <laughs> there goes the shutout. Oh, well. That's all right. We've been talking about it a lot. Probably jinxed him. I have to say, a good baseball title for modern-gen systems. You know, we don't cover a lot of the the contemporary games here on Video Games 101, but uh, I have to say, I'm a big fan of the Super Mega Baseball series for, uh, I suppose I played it on the PlayStation 4 and most recently on the latest series of Xbox, but uh, just very fun, kind of cartoony style uh, a baseball game which has a fantastic soundtrack and just a lot of fun to pick up and play you can play co-op which you can't do in a lot of baseball games certainly from this era if it was two player it was going to be you versus someone else whereas in that game you can do a uh, a co-op swapping turns at bat and taking turns pitching on the mound but i uh, definitely recommend checking that out if you're into baseball games or sports games in general and uh, on modern systems. I think we're on the fourth iteration of that series now. They churn a lot of those games out, but they're all pretty fun. Played the fourth one most recently. Coming up on the ninth year, let's see if we can protect our 30-run lead here at quadruple speed in the final inning. It's not a win unless you win by 30 runs. That's what I say. 
Obviously, we won't need to see a bottom of this. If we uh, get this last out, then that's game, set, and match. They don't call it that, but there you go. Game, set. All right, that was baseball for the NES. Thank you so much to Blaze and Fluff for helping me out today. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already yet done so. We do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled. Click that like button. It really does help us out. And leave a comment. Have you ever played the original NES baseball game? Or maybe better asked, what is your favorite baseball title on the NES? Leave a comment below and we'll talk about it. But that's our time this week. We'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class right here on Video Games 101. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.